Welcome to Called to Fellowship with Cynthia Kuhn. This podcast is an outreach of Called to Fellowship Ministries. We invite you to visit us online at calledtofellowship.org, where you can find additional resources and messages. Now may the Lord bless you, give you ears to hear, and cause you to experience His love as we join Cynthia in discovering the heart of God. Thank you for joining me. We have been discussing and studying the revelation of knowing Him, knowing God in His fullness. We looked at that that was the purpose that God created man, and that Adam in the garden, he walked in this knowing God. He lived in perfect fellowship, perfect communion, and perfect union with God. He didn't have to, in the sense, learn anything. He did not learn about God. He knew God because he had the life of God in him. He had the mind of God. That's how he named all the animals. He did not learn. He discerned. And he walked in life with God. This was the level that man was created to walk on. God is spirit and God is love. And he created man a spirit being, a love being, to walk in perfect fellowship and union with him. Adam could receive on the same level that God desired to give. Then we saw when Adam decided to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that he fell. He lost that connection with God. He was now a flesh being. God was on the outside looking in. If he was going to come to man now, he had to come from the outside. Up until this point, the only Adam knew God On the inside, he, from the time that Adam took his first breath, he knew God. He knew that God loved him. So now God is on the outside looking in. But we saw that the heart of the Father never changed. He still pursued man. The whole Bible is a record of God pursuing man. He came to Adam in the garden. Adam was hiding from him. He certainly wasn't looking for him. And we saw throughout the Old Testament that God kept coming to man. He kept, he came to Abraham. He came to Noah. He came to man and he made covenant with them because he wanted to be one with his man. The heart of every covenant in the Bible is, I will be your God and you will be my people. And then we came all the way up to the New Testament and we saw that Jesus Christ came. He walked on this earth under the Abrahamic covenant. This is one thing when you are studying covenant and you are studying the gospels that you must realize that when Jesus ministered on earth, When he ministered in the Gospels, he did not minister the New Covenant. He did not minister as the first begotten uh, from the dead. He was not, he had not gone to the cross yet. He came and he ministered under the Abrahamic Covenant and he ministered to the Jews. You see this out of his own mouth. He said, I am not sent to the Gentiles. He did not minister to the Gentiles because they were outside of the Abrahamic covenant. He ministered as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. He had the blessing of Abraham on him. And when Jesus went to the cross, he took Adam's sin. He took all of the curse into him. He paid the full price for it. And he went to hell for us. And on the third day, 
the life of God came back into him. God said, and you see this um, in Hebrews, I believe it's chapter one, where it says, this day I have begotten you. Again, I will be to you a father and you will be to me a son. We really have to let Jesus die on the cross, not just a physical death. He died spiritually on the cross. Not only that, but through the epistles, the apostle Paul really had a revelation of identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6 goes into this talking about how our old man was crucified with him. Jesus died spiritually. At that moment, he was no longer connected to God. He of his own will gave up his life. He said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. He gave it up. He willingly chose to go from life to death. He made a decision and willingly absorbed all of sin, all the curse, and the full penalty, the spiritual death that went along with it. So at this point, Jesus is separated from the Father. He no longer has the life of God in him. And when the Father spoke those words, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten you. And again, I will be to you a father and you will be to me a son. Jesus was the first man born again. He was the first man to ever be born from death to life. And when Jesus was born again, the life of God came back into him. And this was one thing that really opened my eyes to this revelation of knowing God. At that moment, Jesus knew the Father. He knew him again. How did he know? Jesus is not up there in heaven learning about the Father. He knew because the life of God came into him. The glory of God came into him. The light of God came into him. The love of God came into him. Once again, he was one with the Father. And that very same thing happened to you when you were born again. When you made that decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you heard the gospel. And when you heard that, you heard the faith of Jesus. You receive the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same faith that Jesus had that God would raise him from the dead. You you can see this in the Psalms. You can see this out of his own mouth where it's very clear is, I think it's over in the John 11 where he talks about Lazarus. He said, I am the resurrection. Now at that point, Jesus was standing here on earth. He had not gone to the cross yet. He had not been crucified, so he wasn't the resurrection yet. But God deals outside of time. Jesus was dealing with the covenant made between him and the Father before the world began. That's why you see so much of Jesus. I am. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Because this is who he was. But he was also making a faith statement. He was calling things that be not as though they were. And that faith that Jesus released when he said, I am the resurrection and in other places talking about the seed dying, that was the faith that God raised him from the dead with. And when you heard the gospel, that same faith came into you. And when you confess Jesus as your Lord, the faith of Jesus came into you And you were born again. You received the same life. Uh, Romans 6 talks about the same glory that raised him from the dead, raised you up. And all of the life of God came into you. All of the love of God, all of the light of God, everything that makes God, God came into you. And with that life coming into you, 
there are spiritual instincts you could say, you know, you know as God knows. And so after Jesus is raised from the dead, he is now, he ascends. Remember he said, um, don't touch me. I haven't ascended to the father yet. He then took his blood up into heaven, into the Holy of Holies, and he made a covenant. Here we have God the Father and Jesus Christ, a born again, immortal man, making covenant with each other. This is the new covenant. And then Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. What we really have to understand is that this covenant is between God the Father and Jesus, a born again man who cannot fail. He is immortal. This covenant is completed. You, when you are born again, you are in this covenant because you are in Christ. In Christ is a covenant term. He is our representative. We were in him, in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, and his ascension to the right hand of the Father. I've heard too many Christians say that they sin, they mess up, and now they are, quote, they're out of covenant. They are out of fellowship with the Father now, and they're trying to get back into fellowship. The Father won't have anything to do with them. That is just simply not true. First of all, you are in covenant in your born-again spirit. And In Hebrews 10, it says, by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Your born again spirit is perfect. It is just like Jesus because it is Jesus. All of Jesus, all of the Holy Spirit, all of God the Father is in you and you are in them. All of the life, all of the righteousness, everything in Jesus is in you. And the other point of your born again spirit is that it's eternal. It's just like God. Eternal is not only the length everlasting. Eternal means you can't change it. It's unchangeable. And I believe it's in Second Corinthians 4 where it brings this out that we don't look at things that are temporal, but we look at it things that are eternal. And here it is comparing things that are seen or temporal, but things are eternal. They're not, they're not changeable. You can't change God. You can't add anything to God and you can't take anything away from him. Well, in your born again spirit, you can't add anything to your born again spirit and you can't take anything away from your born again spirit. Your spirit is in perfect fellowship with the Father because you are one with the Holy Spirit. Now, you can yield your body to sin. You can yield it to the enemy. Your your mind, your natural mind, your brain has been programmed in the ways of the world and it functions by habit. Until you get your mind, your natural mind renewed and your brain reprogrammed to your born again spirit, you are going to, it's going to be tough to walk in the spirit because what's in your spirit has to come through your natural mind, your brain into your body. So yes, you can yield to sin, but it does not affect God. God is never going to change you. It doesn't affect your born again spirit. Your spirit is fellowshipping with the Father. Your spirit is communing with the Father. But what it will do is it will cause you to be less sensitive. You will be less aware. Really, the whole key to living the Christian life and walking in the life of God is getting your natural mind, your brain, to be conscious of what is in your born again spirit. Man was created to live like that. He was to live out of his spirit man. 
His soul would receive all of his information, all of his knowledge from his spirit man, and he would dictate to his body everything the body thought, said, or did. The body will just follow the mind that it's created by God to do that. So you will always be as a born again person, one with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is always in perfect fellowship and God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He is love for you never changes and who you are in Christ never changes. You are one spirit with him. You are perfected forever. You are in perfect union, fellowship, and communion with him. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, know him and reveal him. If you've been blessed by today's message, please let us know. Go to calledtofellowship.org to share your testimony, get information about partnering with us, or contact Cynthia about speaking at your church or conference. You can also connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash called to fellowship. Until next time, may you come to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, and may you be filled with all the fullness of God.